What's going on guys, it's Simo coming back at you guys with yet another live dual commentary. So on the left we got Solomon Great, one of the strongest decks of the current format, going up against a deck that not a lot of people expected to come out of the woodwork, and that's going to be Vanity's Ruler Stun. I mean, it's just this crazy anti-meta stun deck. I did an entire video discussing this deck after it took first place, I believe, at a French regional, and we're gonna see a uh, Ash Blossom, as a matter of fact, hitting this pre-preparation of rights. That card is solely used to search Serrabus, the Ancient and Ascended to protect your uh, whatever your stun monster is of choice that you can get to the board. The deck plays cards such as Arc Lord Christia, Vanity's Ruler, uh, and here as we see, Vanity's Fiend. So if he was able to get that pre-prep to go off, he would have been able, or excuse me, a regular preparation of rights, he would have been able to get Seravis to protect his Vanity's Ruler here, or excuse me, his Vanity's Fiend, and uh, yeah, but he's got a solemn judgment for this Impermanence, so Impermanence being one of the few outs that the uh, top decks do run, but Solemn Judgment gonna bring him down down to 4,000 life points, but that Vanity Fiend is still going to have the game on lock, and neither player is going to be able to special summon, and it's going to be pretty rough for the Salomon Great player. There aren't really too many other outs that I think natively these main meta decks at the moment run to be able to combat something like this, and that's why a deck like this has managed to see some amount of success. Now, I think one of the biggest issues here as we see the Salomon Great player fire off a sign at Mining for Foxy, one of the biggest issues is I think going up against Rogue, because the Rogue decks don't really care about special summoning nearly as much as a deck like uh let's say salomon great or orchestra or anything like that but if you can play up against like all meta decks throughout the course of a tournament and if you can win some die rolls because obviously there is a big degree of luck to this you can do just fine so we're gonna see a normal summon to foxy Ooh, there's another in permanence there's gonna be a whiff though on the foxy effect so no extra card advantage there like i said it's gonna be very difficult i don't think there's very many outs for salomon great to even be able to play under a card like this uh so we're going to have to see him uh, struggle for a bit here. But the thing is, one of the weaknesses, I would say, of this stun deck is that they do struggle to get damage on the board because if you don't have really much follow-up, yeah, sure, you can lock them out as we see this Vanity's Fiend attack over the Foxy for uh, 1,400 damage. But if you can't close out the game, they do have several turns to possibly draw into their copy of, let's say, Infinite Impermanence to be able to out the Vanity's Fiend. And, you know, with cards like, let's say, Flame Buffer Low, which the deck can play, uh, you know, there are going to be some ways for uh, you to be able to dig in a deck like Salomon Great. Orcus has Allure of Darkness and Orchestrated Nightmare. So there are ways to kind of go ahead and search your outs here. We're going to go ahead. It looks like a Flame Buffer Low actually just hit the graveyard as a matter of fact as we see a salomon great monster get sent off uh, for the effect to draw a couple more cards so again just being able to dig for a few cards deeper we didn't see the uh, vanity stun player get any extra damage in that turn so if you aren't able to establish multiple threats then the deck doesn't look too intimidating although it can be frustrating playing against this deck considering if you don't have any other outs natively in your deck at least that might be searchable let's say Ooh, and here comes an inspector border so this is what i was talking about so now that he has two threats established He's able to swing in for 4,400 here, so that's going to actually put the uh, Salomon Great player within lethal damage next turn if he's not able to find an out. But even if he finds an out for this Vanity's Fiend, Inspector Border is also another card that's very difficult for Salomon Great to deal with. Here's an Upstart Goblin, so uh, the uh, Vanity Stun player is going to go ahead and gain 1,000 life points there, up to 5,000. Remember, he used uh, 4,000 for that Solemn Judgment. And uh, hopefully that card will do him some good. But if not, that just might be the end of this first game. He's going to set a monster in defense. That's pretty desperate considering these monsters can pretty much hit over any main deck Salomon Great card. So he might just go to battle. Inspector Board is going to hit over what looks like a Jack Jaguar. And the Salomon Great player is going to scoop it up. And we're going to go into game number two. And I want to remind you guys that we do have Pro Play Tour Las Vegas coming up here on December 15th. This is great because there's a regional sanctioned by Konami on the 14th at the same venue on the same weekend. So you guys can get two events in one weekend 20 bucks to enter two thousand dollar in cash will be handed out and if you get your invite you'll be invited to the ten thousand dollar invitational in january in orlando florida so links in the description if you want to pre-register west coast players you better turn up and i hope to see you guys there so starting off with game two salomon great's gonna go ahead and go first whiffing on another foxy effect i believe there's a double impermanence and a spell card in there so not having much luck on the foxy effects and his uh hand may not be the best here he's gonna go ahead and link this foxy off into a Bailings. Go ahead and search that Sanctuary out of the deck to at least thin the deck by a little bit. 
but we'll just have to see where he goes from here. Oh, and he hard opened the sanctuary. That always feels bad. Really hate when that happens because then you can't even generate advantage off of that. But he's going to go ahead and reincarnate this Bay Link so that way he at least has one engrave and has, I guess, a minor amount of protection if he can manage to keep that uh, Bay Links alive. It's going to set two and pass though. I think one of those cards was a Twin Twister. Also does fake a potential uh, trap for the Salamangrate deck because they do have Rage and Roar. So you do have to keep that in mind if you are going up against this deck that those cards could still be live in this instance. But again, depending on the type of deck, it may not necessarily matter. So the Vanity Stun player is going to kick things off with a Pot of Duality. Again, because your deck doesn't special summon. Oh, I mean, it goes to a minor degree. I guess you can summon some tokens here. But we're going to see two Vashudas. I guess Vashuda also special summons itself. And uh, a copy of There Can Be Only One. So he's going to opt to take that. There Can Be Only One is very devastating against uh, a lot of the top decks. But Salomon Great, especially since they do play uh, primarily all Cybers type monsters. So it can be very frustrating as a Salomon Great player to play under that. Luckily, Foxy is a way to out it naturally. However, it can still just be very difficult for the deck to deal with if you do not have access to a Foxy, but fortunately, our Salamangrate player does. Now, here comes an Inspector Border, so that is a, a pretty menacing threat for Salamangrate here. He can go ahead and hit over the Bay Lynx. Uh, that's going to go ahead and deal 1,500 points of damage, unless we have a response here, and there's the Rage. That's what I said, so he's able to target the Bay Lynx and pop the Inspector Border. You know, Inspector Border doesn't stop traps, so that's a pretty good one, and uh, he's going to go ahead and set uh, four cards here. Wow, okay, so going in, we do know one of those is there can be only one, and we're going to see a Blind Twin Twister at end phase, and we're gonna see what he pops here. It's gonna go for those middle two. With that, there can be only one looming. That is a bit threatening, and it looks like he hit uh, what looks like to be a Monarch Stormforth, and I think there was a heavy Storm Duster underneath that, as a matter of fact, but I couldn't get, I only got a quick glimpse of it there. And it looks like the Salmonger player is gonna go ahead now, and we're gonna see what he's got. He's going to go ahead and uh, use this copy of Rage, and uh, that's going to go ahead and pop one of these random cards because he just uh, drew that Rage set and passed, and now we're going to go ahead and see him go ahead and blindly pop another card here. It looks like he's going to go for the uh, Heavy Storm Duster, as it would sit. So did not hit the There Can Be Only One. That has to be frustrating. That card is still live, and we might see it get pop uh, shotgunned here. Yes, so now it's going to be up. Now, unfortunately... It's uh, gonna be rough because now he's locked into that Bay Lynx and there's not really a whole lot he can do. Again, these stun players just have access to so many powerful tools, but uh, we're gonna have to see if he has a way to out it. If he can find a way to clear the Bay Lynx off his board. Oh, and there's a circle. Okay, so circle at least allow him to dig through his deck a little bit. But if he can get this Bay Lynx off the board, then he can just easily summon the Foxy with any Salomon Great card he can search off this circle. So that's actually pretty good. Looks like he's gonna go ahead and opt for another Foxy here. Doesn't seem too necessary because he already has one. But uh, yeah, okay, so he's gonna go for a second one. Maybe just to possibly dig for another Salomon Great card. Advance his board state a little bit more. Unfortunately, I don't think he's gonna be able to summon it because if there can be only one, but at least he does have it uh, just to discard for the other Foxy. It's gonna swing in with the Balanx for only 500 damage. Pretty uh, meager amount, but it could add up over time. And he's gonna pass the turn. So plays back here to the Vanity Stun player. He really needs to, just needs to establish a monster on the board at this point. And uh, it looks like he's just passing. I think he has two monsters in his hand he can summon, but he doesn't have any means to summon them from. And there's a top deck Cosmic Cyclone for the There Can Be Only One. That is huge, and that's going to allow him to start going off here. He has a normal summon of Foxy in his hand, and depending on what he gets off of this, there's a buffer low, there's a sign up mining, and there's another buffer. Wow, three for three on misses from Foxy. So you play a pretty heavy density of Salomon Grid cards, so that is pretty unlucky. However, um, it's not the end of the world. He's still able to do plays. He can do plenty of things like link off now into like Sunlight Wolf, different things like that. He looks like he's going to bounce Foxy back to his hand for Falco. So again, there's plenty of things he can do here. You can just attack in for the uh, 1200 and the 500 from the Bay Lynx as well, but it looks like he's going to go ahead and link off here instead. But bouncing the Foxy back to his hand allows him to use it again next turn, so I like this definitely a lot better. Looks like he's going to reincarnate the Sunlight Wolf, and that's really strong because then he can use the reincarnated Sunlight Wolf's effect to get the Rage back from the graveyard, pop two potential cards, and keep in mind, these Vanity Stun decks, um, if you're not already established with protection, Rage can be a very powerful option here because if they have any way to establish something, like let's say a Vanity Fiend or a Christia or anything like that, Rage is something that can easily just make quick work of it, and it's something that you don't really have to worry about. So I like this a lot. Wolf is going to hit in for eight 
1800. So that's going to put him down to 5700 life points, I think, when you add in the 500 from the Bay Lynx as well. And I think the uh, Salamander player is down to 7000 because he's the Cosmic Cyclone. Going to set the Rage and just pass turn. You got to feel pretty good in the simplified board state having a Rage that can pop two cards. But there's a Monarch Stormforth. Ooh, that's pretty rough here. So Stormforth allows you to tribute your opponent's monster. And uh, yeah, so that's going to be a way that he can bypass um, anything here. So he could potentially, I think, can he rage his own wolf? That might be the play. And it looks like he's going to. I don't know. It looks like he's going to target the, um, it looks like he's just going to, no, oh no, he is actually targeting it. Okay, or he's going to send it with the effect of the uh, the first effect of Salaman Great Rage. So that way he gets it off the board and the opponent will not be able to uh, summon a monster. I think that was a very heads up move because just getting them to establish that would just be awful. Here comes Foxy. Is he going to whiff a... F oh my God, he got another Foxy. Okay, so he's... <laughs> man, one in four, but unfortunately hitting another Foxy is not the greatest, but it looks like he drew a spinny for turn and now he can pitch that for the spinny... Or excuse me, the Foxy on the field already. Summon it from the graveyard, go into Mirage Stallion. And it looks like the Vandy Stun player has seen enough Enough, and we're going to go into game number three. Now, this is very scary because even though side decks are in play, Vanity Stun going first in game three, you really don't want to be on the receiving end of that, but you got to make the best of it that you can. Hopefully, the Salamaker player can either draw into some of his outs or those infinite impermanences get glued to his hand. But you got to feel pretty good if you see him just setting two cards and then passing. So let's see what else he's going to do here. Is that a Dragonoid Generator? It looks like it. So for those of you who aren't familiar with this card, uh, if you played back in the day, it's essentially Mausoleum of the Emperor, except only you can use it. Mausoleum of the Emperor, both players could use to uh, tribute summon monsters. But Dragonoid Generator, essentially you pay a thousand life points to make a token, and then you can do that twice per turn. So that way you can get two monsters on the field to tribute. You locked out of the extra deck if you do this, but for Vanity Stun, they do not care in the slightest. And then at the end of the turn, I think the opponent gets a uh, token so that way um I, I mean i guess that's just a drawback so that way they can link off with it but we'll have to see how much this matters looks like he's just gonna make one token though and he's gonna use instant fusion and pay another life point uh, or excuse me thousand life points for his second monster here interesting that he's opting to do this instead of using dragonoid generator twice because he still also uses the same amount of life points except this requires another card to be used so he's going to go for thousand eyes here and now it looks like he's just going to tribute off both thousand eyes as well as the token from dragonoid generator for arch lord christia oh boy so a 2800 beater neither player can special summon and this could be a very uh very reminiscent game of game one here so we're going to have to see just how the Salamander player can navigate this. Again, he does have outs, side decks are in play, so there could be a lot more outs than there were game one. But I think if you go first with this Vanity Stun deck, you're going to be feeling pretty good just simply due to the fact that the amount of outs are so limited. But when you're in games two and three and the side decks are in play, you're going to have to see uh, just how much more those options can actually help out. So Foxy's going to hit another Foxy at the least. Wow. Foxy into Foxy again. Not really getting much help off the Foxy, but you know what? We take those plus ones. It's perfectly fine. And there's a, there can be only one. Ooh, that's really rough. Now we'll see. We do, we did see in game two that the Salamaker player does play Twin Twister. So we could see that here again as well. Hopefully, otherwise this might be a very quick game. And wow, he's just going to pass the turn it looks like. So plays back to the Vandy's Ruler player. He's going to go ahead and attack uh, Christia over the Foxy for 1800 damage. That's going to bring the Salamander player down to 5,200 life, or excuse me, 6,200 life points. I apologize. And play is going to go back to the Salamander player. So again, the Salamander player, again, he, the pressure's on, but he's not in the most immediate of danger here because the Vanity Stun player does need to establish a threat. So here comes another Foxy. Let's see if we get some help here. There's Pankratops. There's a Jack Jaguar. Okay, so it's something that's not a Foxy for once, but it looks like Foxy's finally putting in some work. But again, all these plus ones are good. You're thinning the deck by a card every single time you do this. And if you don't have the out to the Christia, which he didn't last turn, so he might not this turn either, at least you're digging deeper to allow yourself to find those outs. And you just even those little things by thinning your deck by a card can sometimes make the difference as to whether or not you get what you you need. So here comes Twin Twister. We're going to go ahead and pitch a card here and it looks like it's going to be Jack Jaguar. I assume he's going to take out that there can be only one so that way he can play at least to a degree. Obviously Christy is still on the field, but at least he'll be able to normal summon multiple monsters if he has the ability to do so. But wow, actually going for the other uh, Dragonoid Generator. So he's going to hit a set Cosmic Cyclone and the Dragonoid Generator and pass play back. 
And now again, here we go. Christia hitting in another 1800 damage. So that's going to put him on uh, 4,400 life points, I believe, because I think he's taken 3,600 total. And uh, But again, no other immediate threat here from the Vanity Stun player. So there's still at least a couple turns for the Salmon Great player to survive here. And uh, there we go. We see the life points there, 8,000 to 4,400. And again, even just setting a monster here, yeah, another turn's passing, but as long, if they don't have any sort of win condition, like the Dragonoid Generator being allowed them to get the tributes to summon one, then you're in a pretty okay position. You know, Spinny's getting destroyed, not the end of the world. Vanity Stun player's gonna go ahead and set another card and pass play back. Now the Salamander player, again, is just really trying to find that out here. He's just trying to dig for whatever he possibly can. He does have a huge grip of cards. We're going to see a sign at mining, pitching a Sea Archiver. If he does manage to get rid of this Christia, he's going to have tons of resources to get back into this because he has the Sea Archiver. He has the Spinny. There's a Jack Jaguar engraved. There's a Foxy. He actually can use Foxy's effect if he can uh, find a way to uh, negate this Christia to pop the There Can Be Only One, and then he can just start going off. But again, and it really relies on finding the out to that Christia. So here's a pot of duality from the Vanity Stun player. Again, just trying to look for a way to summon. There's a Vanity's Ruler, an Instant Fusion, and a Stormforth. Stormforth could potentially be a way to get another monster onto the board, and it looks like that's what he's going to take. Now the question is, does he have another monster that he can summon, and that way start really putting the pressure on the Salamander player to close out this game? Again, that's one of the weaknesses of this deck. If you can't find your threats, then it's going to be difficult. Even though the deck usually plays about nine threats, I think you play like three Christia, three uh, Vanity's Ruler, and three Vanity's Fiend, because then you have a pretty good shot of seeing them. We're going to see Flame Buffalo get hit over by Christia, and that's going to allow him to pitch a Gazelle and draw a couple more cards. So again, the Salamander player just doing everything possible to dig for any out to this Christia here. And it's scary, because even if you find a permanent, it's not guaranteed. We saw in game one that it was met by Solemn Judgment. So... He really just has to hope that he can find the out here. And uh, we're going to have to see what else. I mean, any other threat here will put him on a two-turn clock. The uh, Salaman Great player, that is. So let's see what the Vanity Stun player has now. It looks like he's considering his options. I think that is a copy of Star Blast. Star Blast, I believe if that's what the card is, we'll see if he activates it. Uh, what you do is, it looks like he's gonna go to Battle Phase first, interesting. So we're gonna attack over, it looks like it was a set Ash Blossom. And uh, if that is a Star Blast, Star Blast is a card that you pay 500 life points uh, per increment and to reduce the level of a monster in your hand by one per increment. So you could effectively make an eight star monster, a four star monster if you paid 2000 life points. And it's a nice little card that probably has never seen play ever, but for this particular deck, I think it's pretty cool just to allow you to get your big threats on on the board um, just for the cost of a card really life points are obviously a resource and here comes the star blast so this is going to be interesting to see what he's going to summon here because i'm curious depending on what else he has in his hand i think that might be of a shooter right underneath his thumb he has a duplicate copy of christia which he can't summon because of there can be only one but the is a worm so it's not the same type as christia so he will be able to summon that i believe the is a seven so that way he did just have to pay 1500 life points that way it is becomes a level four and then he can go ahead and normal summon that to the field and just like that he has another threat and we can see right there on the phone, he is gonna pay that 1500 life points. And all of a sudden, the Salamander player is on a two turn clock here because Vishuda is gonna go ahead, hit over this set defensive monster. It is a flame buffer though, so he gets to dig two more deep. He's gonna discard a foul. Can he find that out? But Christia is gonna swing in for 28. That's gonna put him down to 1600 life points. One more turn and the Vanity Stun player will have this. So. It really all comes down to this. Look how stacked the Salamander player's hand is. Another set card from the Vanity Stun player as well. And, oh my god, was that an impermanence that he just drew? I couldn't tell, but I kind of saw the wings of infinity. And that might be it. Okay, so there's the impermanence. It's now or never. Does the Stun player have the judgment? Oh, is this going to go through? It looks like it is. So Christia's turned off now. And now you can just summon Foxy to be able to go ahead. Oh, it's gonna summon Pankratops first. That's even better, because now he gets another threat on the board, and it gives you some significant damage in addition to that. 
So now you can go ahead, pitch for Foxy, summon it to the board. That allows you to go ahead and pop the, uh, there can be only one. So that way you're able to play, assuming he doesn't have a, uh, this Vanity Stump player that is, has a duplicate copy. And then at this point, you can take full control of this game because we saw how stacked his graveyard is. There's a Gazelle in the grave. There's a Jack Jaguar. There's a Spinny. There's a Sea Archiver. So at the very least, he has an auto uh, Mirage Stallio on his field. There's a Foul in the grave, which he could somehow recur. I mean, this deck is so good at recurring its resources. So I'm not really too concerned about that. I mean, this could just completely turn the tide of this duel and the Salamander player might be able to walk away with this. Not to mention Pankratops is able to pop a card at will, but at the very least it signifies just 2,600 points of damage that could possibly just go straight into the Vanity Stun player's face. We're gonna link off the Foxy for a copy of uh, Baylinx here. We're gonna grab the Sanctuary, which luckily wasn't in our hand this time. And again, because of all the digging that the Salamander player did, well, what did we go through? Two copies of Buffalo. He did use a sign up mining. He did pretty much everything in his power and he finally got to that impermanence. That honestly paid off, just taking the time being patient and finally just, I would say luckily, but he definitely did do all the deck that he possibly could to get there. And now we might be able to see him come back from this. So Spinny's gonna special summon itself to Baylinx's arrow with its effect that's gonna Trigger the effect of CR Kyber to bring it to the field as well. So now at the le very least, he can go into Mirage Stallio and start summoning here. And there's, a, there's just a lot he can do. He can bounce with Mirage Stallion when he links off with it. If he goes into Heat Leo, he can shuffle away multiple of the back row on the uh, Vanity Stuns player's uh, field. And we have, there's no other there can be only one. There is no other uh, Solemn Judgment because I feel like he would have used both of those already if you know his board was being threatened like this. So those back row are really not as threatening as people might think here. But we're gonna start with a Phoenix and Phoenix is even great as well because that allows you to take of the third back row and just clear all the threats. And this is where we're really gonna get to see Salomon Great Shine when it has all of its resources available. There was a copy of uh, Monarch Stormforth being popped by the Phoenix here. I'm not sure if he activated it or not because I don't think they have any effects that tribute during the opponent's turn. But, um, you know, he gets to draw a card off the Phoenix as well since it was co-linked to the uh, Bay Lynx here. So again, just having plenty of resources to deal with this board. Now it looks like he's gonna go ahead and link uh, these off. They we could possibly see a Heat Leo here to start shuffling away the other back row, and there it is. So Heat Leo is going to go ahead and come down, shuffle away the first back row that still remains, and then he can go ahead and reincarnation link summon the second Heat Leo, take care of the other back row, and then he knows there's no other threats in the back row, and then he can go into a Mirage Stallio at some point, I imagine, bounce something like the Crustia or the Vashuda, and then he can try to maybe OTK at this point. I don't think it's impossible because he has the Pankratops. Salamangre does sometimes have an issue with damage, but Pankratops kind of reduces that threshold significantly. And not to mention, Heat Leo can use its uh, Reincarnation Link Summoned effect to make the attack of one of these monsters zero here. And then that way, it's like they don't have a monster at all because he does have an Ash Blossom in the graveyard, do remember that. And that will allow him to pretty much attack for a, a full volley of damage at the very least. Right now, if he bounces, let's say, if he makes Mirage Stallion and bounces like Vashuda and then makes Chrissy's attack zero, he has at least 4,900 damage on the field. He still has a Jack Jaguar in Grave, so that's 15, that's 6,700 damage. So I don't think this is unrealistic that the Salamander player could OTK this very turn. It really just depends on what else he has. And uh, there's Will, oh my God, that's insane. So Will the Salomon Great for three cards. And this is where this game is probably going to go to the Salomon Great player. So there comes Gazelle, there comes Foxy, and he can just get any other card he wants here. It doesn't matter, this will trigger Gazelle, so he will get a dump in addition to all of this. And this is just going to be an absolute slaughter now. Wow, just, just like that, the Salamander player off of that one impermanence completely shattering the unassailable board of the Vanity Stun player. And that just shows one of the weaknesses of this deck that if you don't have your Cerevis, if you don't have your Solemn Judgment to protect your Christia or whatever your stun monster of choice is from being negated, then all of a sudden it can go south immediately from the sheer amount of resources that the Salamander player has managed to assemble. We see Mirage Stallio now going ahead and special summoning Falco directly from the deck. He is locked into fires now, but I don't think it matters at this point. He can just go ahead and make like a Sunlight Wolf, bounce Vashuda, and he should have more than enough damage on the board to be able to clean this game up. He can make a Sunlight Wolf for 1800, resurrect Jack Jaguar for an additional 18, and I honestly just think that's the game right there. 
Just want to make sure everything's accounted for though, because uh, you don't want to mess up in this situation because if you do and that Chrissy comes back online, it could be very big trouble. Although Pankratops is on the field, so I suppose it's not the worst. Pankratops could just tribute itself and pop the Christia. But let's go ahead and see what we got here. I think we're using Helio's effect. Yes, we are. So we're going to go ahead and target the Ash Blossom and the Christia. So Ash, uh, Christia's attack is now zero. And he's going to go ahead and use Helio attack over for 2300 damage. And then, uh, oh wow, leaving Mirage Stallion on the field. Interesting. So Mirage Stallion is going to hit over the Vishuda. I think Vishuda is actually 1800 attack. And wow, and that's going to do it. The Vanny Stun player is just going to scoop up. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. And we'll see you next time.